welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now today's video comes in answer to a question from one of my clients in Singapore. I recently did a reading for a lovely, lovely lady in Singapore and we had a bit of email banter back and forth afterwards because she had some specific questions and one of the questions that she asked I thought it was so good and it's kind of stayed with me and has become the basis of today's video. So her question was more specific. It was more around, I think, the third house of her chart and asking about siblings. And, you know, I thought this was saying more about the siblings than it was saying about me. But it was through that interaction we had that I thought, you know what, this is going to be a good video for lots of people. And I'm going to reframe the question slightly. Um, I'm going to go with something like, is the chart just all me? Is it just representing me? Okay, so that's today's question. And I've got an interesting way of approaching it. I'm going to use a story at the start. And then we will get into an astrological explanation. So we'll start with the story. I have no notes today. This is just straight out of my head. You know, welcome to my mind. You'll need a bodyguard and a team of therapists. No, I'm just kidding. You just need a bodyguard. No, no, really. It's my mind is bizarre, but um, interesting. Okay, right. We're going to have three characters and I can pick any characters I like. So I'm going to pick a boss and I'm going to pick Oprah Winfrey because I like Oprah. And we're going to have me. I'm going to be in this story too, this fictional story. Now this fictional story is one that I would use when I was just doing pure coaching. Uh, it's, it's an example that I would use to... Well, I used to use it to illustrate the power of a very well-developed auric field. So just stay with me and I'll show you. And then we'll have a look at this same story, but in an astrological context. Okay, and by the end of this, you'll see that the chart is all you. Uh, it, it's interesting. All right, so in this story, we have a boss. And look how I've drawn him. I've kind of drawn him. His symbol is pretty... I don't have very good feelings towards this boss guy, do I? No, I don't. It's not looking very good here. If Oprah drew this diagram, she would draw this symbol differently. Okay, and you'll see why in a moment. We've got the boss and we've got Oprah and me. So we're co-workers and we present ideas to this boss guy on a frequent basis. Every week we're showing him ideas. And for some reason, this boss just doesn't like me. He doesn't like me at all. Every idea I present to him, he hates it. And I'm presenting the exact same ideas that Oprah presents. She hasn't seen my idea, but I always present an idea and then she somehow, through the intelligence of the collective consciousness, picks the exact same idea. And, and But her idea gets through, but when I present it, he hates it. So... What's going on here? Why is this happening? Well, when I was doing coaching work, this was always an argument for why you should do self-development work. Because in this story, in this example, Oprah does lots and lots of self-development work. Her aura is sparkling, right? Sparkling white, beautiful aura. She has done a lot of self-development work and she's done a lot of forgiveness. She's done a lot of healing. She has no baggage. She's given it all up. She's, she's up to date. She's up to speed. She's emanating beautiful white light, probably because she exercises every day or does yoga every day or does meditation every day or something like that. She's, she's on it, right? And as Oprah moves through the world, she keeps attracting the best side of everybody. Everybody likes her. Everybody wants to give her free stuff. Everybody wants to be her friend. Everybody... You know, it's just love and Oprah, right? She's just on fire and, and people like her ideas and very receptive to her. And look at that sparkling, beautiful aura, right? She's done a lot of self-development work. She's attracting 
great stuff out of this one person. Now out of this one person, out of this same person, I'm attracting the worst stuff. I'm attracting criticism, insults, this, that, he doesn't like me. And my aura is kind of not so great. I haven't done my self-development work. Maybe I've got some holes in my auric field. And maybe some of his insults, they get through. They get through and they hit me right in the heart and I feel terrible, right? So this is an interesting example of how one person, right, yet two very different experiences experience right and one person but two very different experiences and it really does make you think that well yeah it's good to do self-development work isn't it it's good to work on yourself it's good to do all of those good things she's doing all those good things as she moves through the world She's attracting the best out of everybody. So you can see from this example that who, where's the issue? It's not with this person. The issue is with me, okay? I'm the one who's got the issue, right? Oprah doesn't have an issue. He doesn't have an issue. I do. He's one person, two very different experiences. So let's take a look at this astrologically okay and you'll see how this question of is the chart all me you'll see how it, it kind of is all right so we're going to use the example of the moon and I'm going to put moon mother and I'm going to draw two charts here and I'm going to change the story a little bit. I'm going to give myself something nice. <laughs> In the last story, I was having a rough time, wasn't I? In my previous incarnation, <laughs> like two minutes ago. Uh, but now I'm going to have a good one because I want to. Because I just had a, a disaster. God, that boss was mean. Have you ever had a bad boss? God, I, had a, I had a terrible one once. And he, re he really didn't like just anything. Oh my God, anything that came out of my mouth. He just, oh, he hated me so much. I've had, to, I've, had, I've had it all from like the best boss in the world to like, yeah, one that just, wow, he just did not like me. I've had a range of them. All right, so we're going to put uh, moon here in the second. So this is a Virgo ascendant. I'm going to be a Virgo ascendant in this incarnation. I'm going to have a Libra moon. And my sister, I'm going to have a sister. In real life, I don't have a sister, so why not? I'm going to create a little sister for myself here. Is she, hmm, is she little or older? I'm so used to being the younger sibling. I quite like it. And she's going to be older. How about that? So uh, she's going to have a very different moon. I'll put that in the, oh, let's see. She's going to be an Aries ascendant. She's going to have a Scorpio moon in the eighth house. All right, let's have a look at this story. Now I've got another story. New story, new incarnation. I've got a good thing this time round. Look at me. I've got moon in the second house, right? Mother's in the second house. She's cooking me all sorts of delicious food. She loves me. She cares for me. She, which is basically my real mum, right? So I'm very lucky in real life. I have a real wonderful mum who's done all those things. Uh, but in this fictional example, okay, yes, okay, a moon in the second house in Libra. Beautiful, right? Great moon. My sister, though, she has a moon in the eighth house in Scorpio. And I can tell you now, this sister of mine has had pretty tough times with mum, okay? Now look at this example again right? One. There's one mother, one person, yet two people are having very different experiences. So the experiences of experience, the experience of this one person is so different, right? 
Isn't that incredible? She is the same person. Yet I had a great childhood and this sister of mine didn't have such a good childhood. She had it a bit tough. Okay, so in answering the question, is the chart all me? I would say yes, the chart is all you. Because this is my idea, this is my concept of what a mother is in this lifetime. And this is her concept of what a mother is and should be, right? So I've got written on my whiteboard up here that what, what does this prove? This proves a couple of things. This proves, number one, that judgment is a complete waste of time. When we judge people, what are we actually judging? And this is what I've got written down on my whiteboard here. Um, when we're judging someone, I've got the note here, you're hating the obstacles you chose for yourself. That's all that you're doing, right? Now, this all might take some mental leaps. I don't know how you're doing with this. See, this all makes sense to me, but then it all makes sense to me because I've been immersed in the teachings of Jiddu Krishnamurti, right? For him, it's all him. The whole universe is just him, right? Um, I've also been immersed in the teachings of, and I'm going to link to this below, Emmanuel by Pat Rodegast. I've probably listened to this piece that she's done, I don't know how many times, lots and lots of times. And in this piece, this channeled piece that she does, she says that you are your own idea given form. And this is what I believe. I believe that my mother that this is, this is the concept of my mother. This is what I came to experience this time round. I chose this concept of mother. She could be anyone, right? The same goes for your D9 chart. It's very easy to see with your D9 chart. This concept illustrates beautifully there because in real life, we do chop and change partners quite a bit, don't we? Or maybe you've had a few partners before you settle down and get married. Right, so in that instance, it's very easy to see because we've all had that experience of you keep attracting the same partner. Why is that? It's because your D9 chart, right? That's your idea of a partner. And I'll do a separate video about that. This time I just want to keep it simple. And where are we? We're about the 12 minute mark. But yeah, I mean, this is, this is really interesting. Yeah, so I've got the notes here. Judgment is a waste of time and two, it could be anyone. So this person could be anyone. So also that this is how we mustn't take things so personally as well. Similarly with bosses, I suppose. But then I just said, didn't I, that I've had all kinds of, I, I mean, I have. I've had all kinds of bosses from the really good to that really horrible one. But in many ways, they've all been quite similar. I'll look that one up. I'll, I'll look at, at that astrologically and see how that one works. But I can definitely see it with, say, for example, your partner. That the, the partner you have, that's your D9 chart. And it's got good bits and it's got obstacles. It's got challenges, right? And so anytime you judge someone, you're just judging the obstacles that you set up for yourself in your own chart. Because another thing I also believe is that we choose our chart before we incarnate. We choose it, right? We choose our life. We choose our parents. We choose the entire setup. And I do believe that this map gives a very, very, very good representation of the obstacles, the challenges. You know, and look at this. This is another thing I was thinking about today. I'll finish with this last diagram. And this is to say that you might have had a challenging parent. Let's stick with the parent example. I won't go into the partner thing. We'll do a separate video for partner. We'll do a completely different one because I've already got that queued up in my head. But how about we, um, we look at the road of life and sometimes we get stuck. Challenge, challenge. Right, we get stuck on our challenges in the road of life. So we're going down the road of life. 
and then we come up to a challenge and then we just we kind of get stuck in there and we go deep into it we go oh god i just the challenge oh this is really bad and that, that's all you do that you obsess over it you think about it you just that's you just stuck there a lot of people get stuck there but they don't realize that actually we have to turn our focus away the, not to get stuck in the challenge because what you actually wanted you wanted the challenge and I'll tell you why you wanted the challenge satisfaction forgiveness satisfaction and there's a truckload there's heaps here there's like there's infinity going in that direction there but what you wanted you wanted the challenge because you wanted the satisfaction of overcoming it more that's actually what you wanted right you came for that satisfaction you didn't come for the challenge you came for the satisfaction of overcoming it you came for the satisfaction of figuring it out you came for the satisfaction of healing you came for the satisfaction knowing that if i figure this thing out that information goes into the collective consciousness and all of a sudden 100,000 other people who are going through the same thing will find it easier to figure it out too that's actually what you came for so on that more positive note <laughs> i think i'm going to end it there we're at the 16 minute mark oh this has gone a little bit long but i hope this has been helpful and i hope this does answer the question of is the chart all me because on one level yes i do believe the chart is just all you even though it contains mother father siblings spouse you know all these other people they're all your concept and if you want to really get into that i will recommend specifically emmanuel by pat rodegast uh, i will leave the link below she will in a very gentle sophisticated and beautiful way uh, take you through and help you develop that mindset where you see that it's all you okay this is all your idea given form and any challenges you have they're your challenges and you wanted the satisfaction of overcoming that challenge more than the challenge that's the part to remember all right well thank you so much for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you next time.